let's look at doing some algebra for accelerating objects. Now what we'll start with is actually a derivation of two algebraic equations for this class. If you go to the beginning of your notes, you'll see that we already derived one algebraic expression from your lab, vf equals a delta t plus vi. Now again, we got that by looking at a velocity versus time graph for an accelerating object and writing the equation that would draw this line. Now this is a wonderful equation and it is certainly something that we will use in this class. However, it has its limitations. For example, what if I asked you how far something went as it was speeding up or it was slowing down? Now that's a very reasonable question to ask, but we would not be able to solve that question using algebra alone. We would have to go up to a graph and we would have to find something about the area between our line and the x-axis of the graph in order to solve that question. That is a perfectly valid uh, problem solving strategy, but it's not something we want to have to do all the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two equations that you are already somewhat familiar with, and we're going to combine them together. So you'll have to forgive me. This equation, too, was not supposed to be written there. It was supposed to be VF equals A delta T plus VI. That was the equation that was on the front of your notes. We're going to take that equation and we are going to combine it with delta x equals one half vi plus vf times delta t. It may not look like it right now, but this is actually our old friend from last unit, delta x equals v delta t. From the, again, the front page of the notes, if you look in the uh, definitions box, we redefined what average velocity was, and we said that as long as our acceleration is uniform, we could use one-half vi plus vf in place of average acceleration. So this delta x equals one-half vi plus vf times delta t is really just our old friend in disguise. And we are going to combine these two equations together and get rid of time. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to take that VF equals A delta T plus VI. And we need to change it so that instead of saying VF equals, it says delta T equals. So the first thing we'll do is we'll subtract VI to the other side. We'll divide both sides by acceleration and then we get delta t by itself. Now let's take that and let's substitute it right there into delta x equals one half times vi plus vf. And then instead of writing delta t, I will write vf minus vi divided by a. Ooh, this looks really hard to remember. So let's try to clean it up and see if we can rewrite this in a way that's a little easier to remember. Um, let's take this 2 and this a, since they are in deno the denominator, let's multiply them to the other side. So we get 2a delta x equals vi plus vf multiplied by vf minus vi. Now this is a little bit simpler and easier to remember, but I bet we can go even further. If you remember in math class, things like this, we can FOIL them. So let's FOIL the right-hand side of the equation and see if we get something that looks a little bit nicer. So 2a delta x is the left-hand side of the equal sign. That's going to stay the same. Now we need to FOIL first vi vf outside minus vi squared inside plus vf squared and then last minus vi vf Ooh. didn't seem to make it much simpler until we realize that we've got positive VIVF and negative VIVF. And so those things cancel out and go away. 
And so if we rewrite this equation, we can rewrite it as vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x once we move that vi squared to the other side of the equation. And this is going to be a hugely important equation for us because we don't have to know anything about time in order to use it. And truthfully, we're really bad at measuring time. So we don't want to have to always rely on time being part of our analysis. When we don't have to use time, everything works out better. So this is going to be a big, big equation. Let's do another derivation. We're actually going to take the same two equations that we originally started with last time. So vf equals a delta t plus vi. And we're going to combine them in order to get rid of final velocity. So instead of getting rid of time, we're getting rid of final velocity. Hopefully, we'll end up with something different. Now, this is very convenient because our vf equals a delta t plus vi is ready to be substituted right in. So delta x is equal to 1 half times vi plus, and instead of writing vf, I'm going to write a delta t plus vi. And then there's that delta t on the other side of the parentheses. Um, let's consolidate some of these things because we got a lot of repetition here. Let's call this 1 half delta t times 2vi plus a delta t. There we go. That's a little bit cleaner. And you know, we really could keep it like that, but I bet if we take that 1 half delta t and we distribute it into the parentheses, that would probably clean up this equation a lot more. And so we would end up getting delta x is equal to, well, 1 half times 2 cancel each other out. This just ends up being vi delta t plus 1 half a and delta t times delta t ends up being delta t squared. So that's going to be another equation for us that we would like to memorize. Now, the beautiful thing is that this equation is something we actually could have gotten from a graph. If you remember from the up and down the ramp lab, we made position versus time graphs. And they were curves, something like that. If we were to take that curve and straighten it, we would have to square what is on our x-axis. So this ends up being a position versus time squared graph. And when you do that, that curve becomes a straight line. And the cool thing is that if you look at the slope of this, the slope of this straight line is half of the acceleration that this thing is undergoing. Just like how we show right there. You guys will actually be able to do a lab that pertains to this um, when you do the 1D video analysis lab. We're going to see how this is actually true. And it is super cool. OK, um, back to these two derivations. I'm never going to expect for you to be able to do these derivations again. It's not going to show up on a test. I'm not going to ask you to do it. However, it's good that we derive these together so that you understand where these kinematic equations are coming from. They're not just something that I made up. There's, there's math behind it. So what I would like for us to do is I would like for us to write all of the kinematics equations that we have down in one place. And this is going to be the place. Now, from unit two, we had delta x is equal to v delta t. This is going to count as one of our four major kinematics equations. But one thing to remember about this one is that this one only works when we have a constant velocity. If our velocity is ever changing, we cannot use delta x equals v delta t. Instead, we'll have to use one of the three that we've come up with this unit. It could be vf equals a delta t plus vi. 
It could be VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta X. Or it could be delta X is equal to VI delta T plus 1 half A delta T squared. Any of those three will work when you're trying to solve um, accelerating problems using algebra. Now, please make sure that you have these written down correctly, because if you have them written down incorrectly, it's going to really mess up any kind of algebra that you try to do. So take the 30 seconds, pause the video, and make sure that you have all of these written exactly as I have them written here. Okay. Let's do one last thing. Let's talk about speeding up and slowing down. Now, a lot of people want to say that whether your acceleration is positive or negative determines whether or not you speed up or slow down, and that's not true. It's actually the combination between your velocity and acceleration that determine whether you speed up or slow down. If your velocity and acceleration are in the same direction, you speed up. So if your initial velocity is negative, your acceleration has to be negative in order to make you speed up. It means that they're working together, right? Our acceleration is working to make our velocity larger. When these things are in opposite directions, that's when we start to slow down. Our acceleration is trying to work against the velocity. It causes the velocity to get smaller and smaller. Now, it doesn't matter whether you are moving in the positive or the negative direction. If your acceleration is zero, you're going to move at a constant velocity. On the other hand, if your velocity is zero, it doesn't matter whether you speed, whether you have a velocity or an acceleration in a positive or negative direction. No matter what, you are going to speed up. And then, if you have a velocity that is zero and an acceleration that is zero, well, man, you are at rest. So keep these positives and negative combinations in the back of your mind as you're trying to solve problems and determine for yourself whether or not an object is speeding up or slowing down.